Stella, for starters, uh, can you summarize in, in a few words briefly the situation of uh, Julian Assange as of today regarding uh, his uh, extradition uh, process? Well, Julian um, has been going through an extradition uh, case in the United Kingdom for over three years now. The day that he was taken from the embassy, the US revealed that it had indicted him. And um, ever since that day, the 11th of April, 2019, he's been in a high security prison, Belmarsh prison, the harshest prison in the UK, in fact. And he's remained there and he's not serving a sentence. He's there on remand because the United States uh, wants to extradite him. So the uh, actual legal case has already been through a few appeals, but it's a little, it can seem a little bit confusing because, um, because actually Julian won initially at the lowest court um, and the US appealed that decision. And as part of their appeal, um, they basically moved the goalposts and introduced a, a new element, which was what they called assurances, but they were everything, anything but assurances about his treatment. And the high court considered that uh, those assurances um, to basically change the outcome of, of the, uh, or, or the lower court's decision. And so now we found, find ourselves in a situation um, where we are appealing the, uh, all the grounds that Julian had lost initially. Um, and it's a, it's a massive extradition case when you're talking about the case itself legally, because what the United States has done and I'm sure we'll go into this, is uh, it's taken an unprecedented step by um, indicting a publisher for publishing government documents. Uh, the United States has never done this before. It's mm. also applying its, its laws extraterritorially uh, on a foreign national publishing from abroad and so on. Um, the implications are enormous, including for uh, press freedoms in the United Kingdom kingdom um, and the European, the Council of Europe space more broadly, because this case is likely to end up in the European Court of Human Rights. Uh, at the stage where we're at is uh, the Home Secretary, Priti Patel, which is the equivalent of, say, the Minister of Interior in, in European countries, uh, has signed off on the extradition request. So there was a very interesting period in recent in the last couple of months where the case was completely outside of the courts. It was solely up to the political, um, up to the executive in the, in the hands of Priti Patel to say whether she um, would allow the extradition or not. And uh, last, sorry, two Fridays ago, um, she announced that she would allow the extradition. So the stage where things are at right now is that Julian can still appeal to the High Court and potentially to the Supreme Court and ultimately to the European Court of Human Rights. May he be able to uh, defend his case uh, in, a, in a US court and um, <clears throat> also citing all the elements that you just um, mentioned uh, for his own defense, including uh, also the, uh, of course, the First Amendment, but <clears throat> also the public interest that there, uh, there is in publishing those uh, informations? Well, um, the, the, basically the, the, the trial is rigged. And I say that because the legislation that Julian is accused under um, is the US Espionage Act from 1917, which has been so broadly wor worded um, that it has been able to be repurposed to be used against a publisher. Now, um, for, um, from the European perspective, perhaps this kind of history in, in the United States is less familiar, but basically constitutional lawyers in the United States have been warning for over 50 years since the Pentagon Papers case where the Nixon administration was looking to prosecute the New York Times for publishing this material about the Vietnam War. Um, they have been warning that the Espionage Act uh, that the government, that successive governments have been considering 
going after journalists for publishing under the Espionage Act because it is worded so broadly and vaguely. And the first time that this has been done has been with Julian under the Trump administration because under the Trump administration, um, there was a very antagonistic relationship with the press. Uh, obviously Trump wanted to uh, prosecute uh, and even reportedly even execute um, uh, the leakers like the sources um, and also find a way to, to go after uh, journalists themselves. And so this case is precedent setting. It has never been done before and it will be used as a, um, as a, a, a precedent for future cases as well. Julian faces uh, trial in the Eastern District of Virginia so um, because this is an extraterritorial uh, prosecution, any state in the United States could have been chosen, but they chose the Eastern District of Virginia. Why this is where uh, all the national security uh, mm. complex is situated. The court itself is about 20 kilometers from uh, the CIA headquarters. And it is a small area, a small district in which uh, uh, vast majority of people who live there are actually working or, or married to or have a brother or sister working within this national security uh, complex. So the jury would be made up of already not a representative, uh, broader representation of the population. Hmm. Uh, then you have the fact that the Espionage Act itself does not allow for a public interest defense. And if you think about it, okay, this law was, was introduced in 1917 to prosecute spies. Spies obviously normally work for the government. That's what they do. And they pass information to a foreign government. That's how we understand espionage um, normally. Julian isn't accused of any of that. He's accused <clears throat> of receiving information from a journalistic source and publishing it to the public, not to benefit any government, but to, uh, for the public uh, to, to know the truth. Uh, so there is no public interest defense in that legislation. So Julian would not be able to argue, well, I published this to expose uh, these war crimes or this abuse. It was in the public interest. He cannot mount a defense essentially because the way it's interpreted is uh, if you turn publishing true information into a crime, then he's guilty. Uh, so essentially there's that, and there are other aspects. One of the most uh, shocking aspects is that the US government has announced, has said in, in the proceedings that because Julian is a foreigner, because he's an Australian citizen and he's not a US citizen, he will not be able to say, he will not be able to invoke first mm. amendment protections. So basically the constitutional protections are not available to him. This from a European perspective is, is uh, completely insane. If you apply your criminal um, uh, criminal laws to uh, a person abroad, then they should be able to um, at least be put on an equal footing uh, with uh, US citizens uh, in the courtroom, but that's not the case. So Julian faces 175 years and if he is extradited, uh, he doesn't, he doesn't have a defense. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a completely outrageous and, uh, and, and truly insane um, uh, proposition that is being advanced. Ultimately, it will depend on, uh, on Biden if, uh, if this case moves on uh, in the US or not. Yes, I mean, Biden, Biden can, can drop it uh, at any point. Uh, the... Uh, there's an interesting kind of development uh, in the last three weeks or so, which is uh, that the Australian government for the first time has, the new Australian government has a different approach to this case. Um, whereas previously, uh, previous Australian governments have um, uh, distanced themselves from any uh, well, basically they've, they've uh, been, I'd say facilitating the prosecution. The current government, uh, the current, current prime minister, Anthony Albanese has said that uh, this has gone on for too long. Enough is enough, Julian should come home. 
and mm. that he cannot see what is served by keeping Julian in prison and uh, has even gone on to say that they are engaging with the US government on this issue. So that's it's a political case and the we shouldn't expect, um, you know, or the outcome uh, in the courts uh, seems uh, pretty grim so far. Uh, the, the solution needs to be political and that's what we've been uh, pushing for as his, as his family, uh, that this really needs to be dealt with this at the highest level uh, and it needs to come to an end. What is the reaction of the European institutions and governments? Um, well, I, I'd say there's there's a lot of mobilization um, and increasingly so at kind of the the uh, NGO level. I mean, Amnesty International and RSF and uh, the European. Um, uh, let's see. Anyway, that the European. Um, journalists organization mm -hmm. uh, and you know at that NGO level there's been a very uh, um, I think positive and um, unequivocal response and in fact with this pretty Patel uh, decision uh, there was a joint letter that went to pretty Patel RSF tried to get a meeting with her um, 2,000, almost 2,000 uh, individual journalists wrote to Priti Patel saying that he should not be extradited because of the implications um, that this case has for them. 2,000 journalists from around the world, including you know European countries and, and the UK and so on. Um, 300 doctors, 300 <coughs> doctors wrote uh, to Priti Patel saying that this this extradition is uh, is not only unethical, um, but medically, uh, um, you know, putting Julian in an extremely uh, uh, dangerous uh, situation. And, you know, I can, I can talk about the medical evidence in the, in the hearing, but um, at that level, uh, there's also the, uh, the OSCE, uh, human rights um, representative and the, Council of Europe Human Rights Commissioner Dunja Mijatovic, uh, they both wrote to Priti Patel asking her to not extradite and to release Julian immediately. Um, and I think just this week, the foreign minister of Germany uh, was pressed by a journalist to, to uh, speak uh, on what her position is on Julian because before, becoming foreign minister, she had expressed that Julian should be released, that the, that the case was outrageous. And now that she's foreign minister of Germany, um, she said uh, she was more cautious in her words, but mm. she said that Germany's view is that this case is a case of freedom of speech. And in that sense, it differs from the way the US sees it. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, um, Obviously, there could be a, a much stronger uh, um, position from European countries, especially in the EU. Uh, I think, unfortunately, there is a kind of re re uh, uh, there's a positional approach to what is actually a um, savage and inhumane attack on an individual, on a journalist because of what he's published. And that the humanitarian arguments, um, as well as the press freedom arguments um, should, should be center stage here uh, because it's not about Julian embarrassed the US and the US is an ally of European countries. It has to be down to, um, you know, is this, is this right or is it wrong? Uh, and it's very clearly wrong on, on many different fronts, uh, but the purely uh, humanitarian front is, is there for everyone to see. Uh, Julian is suffering profoundly. He's not serving a sentence. He's in the UK's harshest prison. 
and he faces a 175 year sentence. The doctors that have examined him as part of the extradition proceedings say that if he's extradited, the conditions he faces are so oppressive that it will drive him to commit suicide. Mm. And the initial judge said that extradition mm. would lead to his death. Uh, so that's where we are. Mm. You know, it's it's not a question about whether who's our who's our friend um, and who's our ally. It's a question about Julian. Julian will die if he's extradited, and the European countries have to. have to express rejection for this because if this were any other country they would be doing it on all the airways all the time uh so it's also a question about you know not just principle but also legitimacy uh do you actually believe in 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 these things that you say when it concerns other countries or are you just instrumentalizing uh these arguments Question from uh, Andreas uh, from the audience. Um, Andreas asks if Julian Assange already has taken any legal steps in reaction to the decision by the uh, by Priti Patel, like obje objections or an appeal to one of the higher courts. And if so, how much time does he have left for an appeal? Is there a, and is there any uh, time frame for that? Yeah, so the appeal deadline uh, is 14 days after the decision. So that brings us to this coming Friday. And that's when the appeal grounds are lodged. And I should probably say something about those appeal grounds. It's not just the grounds that we raised um, originally in the extradition hearing that was heard in 2020. It's also the grounds against the Home Secretary uh, challenging her reasons for signing off on the on the extradition so in fact it's kind of a dual appeal against the us on the one hand and the uk home secretary on the other but it will also allow uh this appeal will also introduce uh new evidence that has come out into into the public domain since the original extradition hearing was heard and the biggest um the most significant evidence uh, which goes to the political motivation and the abuse arguments, the abuse of process, uh, concerns the CIA's actions uh, during, in the lead up to Julian's arrest. Uh, mm -hmm. There was a, a very uh, significant and in-depth investigation in the United States, three investigative journalists, spoke to over 30 sources, that's three zero, in the US national uh, security um, apparatus, that's CIA, the National Security Council, and so on, um, including senior people who were named in the article. And they, uh, they attested to the fact that uh, under Mike Pompeo, the CIA was drawing up plans to not just kidnap Julian, but also assassinate him. Mm. And that his assassination was discussed at the highest levels of the Trump administration. Uh, and that apart from that, a whole raft of very um, uh, aggressive measures were taken against Julian and WikiLeaks, including planting uh, fabricated stories in the media. Mm. Uh, so this was all in order to uh, create the political ground for Julian's arrest. And you'll remember probably in the lead up to his arrest, there was just a, a barrage of, of um, negative uh, publicity, including you know, clear, clear smears, just uh, uh, things to, to reduce um, um, sympathy, uh, to cast doubt over his reputation, his motives and so on. And this was all a, a, a deliberate a staging so that at the point of his arrest, he would be at the lowest point of political uh, support. Hmm. And uh, through the extradition process, we've been able to kind of uh, fight back on many of these claims and call witnesses and, and present evidence and so on. Um, but uh, the, you know, the attack on his reputation, that's how you fight a political case. The other side will attack your reputation because they know that they, they bank on um, you not being able to fight back your political capital to be 
far reduced. Mm. Um, so, I mean, over time, um, the extradition case allows his lawyers to set the record straight on, on various things, but obviously um, the, the setting the record state straight with the public is a whole different, um, a whole different uh, uh, matter. And, you know, through, through speaking to the press and writing articles, um, Julian and, and I mean, not Julian because he can't speak, right? But, but me and Julian's father and his brother, uh, we do what we can to speak to the public, write articles and so on. And Julian's brother has, has produced a film about our family's fight uh, to free Julian. It's called Ithaca. Um, and uh, it's, it's going to, it just opened in the Sheffield Film Festival here in, in, in the UK and it will tour around the UK and we'll have Q and A sessions. Um, mm. But you know, it's, we're trying to fight back against a very, uh, <laughs> the most well-resourced uh, uh, smear campaign um, in history probably, uh, or amongst the, 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 yeah, probably the biggest. Um, and, and, <clears throat> and, you know, we're not the only ones obviously trying to set the record straight. Uh, a lot of people who are observing the, um, the court proceedings uh, were able to, you know, witness the witnesses, for mm -hmm. example, fighting back on claims such as uh, that Julian didn't redact the documents he did, um, mm -hmm. that he was, you know, he was reckless, uh, he wasn't. Um, and, and these were people who were working alongside him. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, claims like that, that people came to harm. And actually when it comes down to it, the US admits under oath that they don't have any evidence for that claim. Um, all these things that, that have are, are um, falsehoods that have been incessantly repeated for 12 years. Um, that we're now able to counter in the courtroom. But as I said, it won't lead to Julian winning a case in the United States. 